All right then, gang. So we're halfway through this login process now, but we need to do two more things. First of all, we need to handle the errors better when a user enters in incorrect credentials, like their email's wrong or the password's wrong, because currently all we're doing is sending back this blank JSON object, and that's ridiculous. It gives the user no helpful information at all. So we're going to handle those in a minute inside this function at the top that we created earlier called handle errors. So we'll do that in a second. The other thing we need to do is if this is a success, the passwords match, the emails match, and they are logged in, we need to then create a JSON web token to put in a cookie and send to the browser to say, hey, yes, they are logged in. And for as long as they've got this JWT, they are logged in. So we're going to do that first of all. So remember, we created this function at the top right here, create token to create a token. And we used that down here inside the sign up handler to create a token. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We create the token here by passing in the user ID. And then we put that token inside a cookie. We set HTTP only to true and max age to be the max age variable we had times a thousand to put it into milliseconds. And that is three days. And the max age came from up here, right? So that's three days. Okay, so all we need to do is grab these two things like this, copy those and paste them right down here. So the token is created by using the user that we have, ID, and then we create the cookie with that JWT. Then we send back as JSON the user ID. All right, so the cookie is being set and we're sending back a JSON user. Awesome. So that bit's done. Now we need to just handle the errors better. So remember, over here inside the user model, we throw these two errors and these are the error messages. So, you know, like up here inside the error handler, this function, we log out error.message. That is going to be these messages right here. And I'm going to demo that. First of all, let me save this and then let's open this up so we can see it and go to this one over here where we're running the application. And if we come over here and try to log in with something invalid, so that's not a correct email, log in, then we should over here in a second see that error message logged to the console. In fact, no, we don't because stupidly we have not called that method down here. So let me come down to the login one over here. We need to call handle errors. So I'm going to say const errors is equal to handle errors. That's the function. And then we need to pass in the error that we catch right here. All right. So let me try this again now. Try to log in by clicking on this thing over here. And then if we go back to the console, hopefully over here, we see this message incorrect email. So that's this thing over here, incorrect email. And if the password is incorrect, then we should see incorrect Oops, we see incorrect email again because the email is still incorrect. Let me change that back to Mario. Log in again, and this time we should see incorrect password. All right. So we get one of those different messages. So what I'm going to do is look for that message inside this function at the top. So just like we look for this error code or we look for something else inside these error messages, we're going to see if we can find one of these messages inside the error message as well. So then let me up here say incorrect email. And I'm going to say if error dot message is triple equal to incorrect email. So that's this thing down here. Now, if this is the case, I want to update the email property on the errors object. So I'm going to say errors dot email is equal to that email is not registered. All right, because they can't find that email inside the database. And that's all we need to do. Now, I want to do the same thing for the password. So let me copy that and paste it right here. And if error message is incorrect password, which is the other message we throw, then I'm going to say here that the errors.password property this time is going to be that password is incorrect. All right, so just some simple error messages to send back to the user. And don't forget, we return these at the bottom over here. So let me save that. And now we grab whatever's returned right here and we can send those errors back here inside this object, much like we did up here. So I'm going to say errors like so. 
All right then, so don't forget, on the front end, if we go to the login screen, you can see if we get a user property back, that means it's successful, we relocate them to the home page. And remember, inside the auth controller, if this is a success, we create the cookie and then send back in the JSON a user property, all right? So that's if it's a success. Now, if we have an errors property, then we're gonna update those errors inside the DOM. These things over here, email error and password error, right here. So let's try this out. I'm gonna cross my fingers. And in fact, I'm gonna delete this JWT right here so we don't have that anymore. And then I'm gonna refresh this page. Okay, so let's try logging in with something that is not valid first of all. So I'm gonna say Sean and then just test, right? So try to log in and it says that email is not registered. All right, so let me try Mario at google.com and then log in again. And it says that password is incorrect. So I'm gonna say test one, two, and this time it should log us in. Yep, and we get that JWT right here. So then my friends, now we are able to sign up and log in. We can't log out yet, but we're gonna see that later. But at the minute, all that means is that when we're logged in, we have this JWT cookie thing inside the browser. But what does that even mean? What can we do with that? Well, it means that for every request that we make for other pages on the site in the future, that cookie with the JWT inside it are sent to the server. So now on the server, we can detect the presence of this JWT on every request made. We can then verify it on the server to determine whether this user is logged in. If the JWT is present and it's valid, it's not been tampered with, then the user is considered logged in and we could do something like grant their request to see a private or protected page that only logged in people can see. If it's not valid or it doesn't exist, we could say they are not logged in and we can deny them access to things that you need to be logged in for. So we're going to see this in practice in the next lesson when we start to protect routes based on the authentication status of users.